Right, students, welcome to Communication 100, Chapter 1, The Foundations of Communication. Now, in this course, we will look at the four corners of communication is an activity you will do in class. We will look at the definition and the three models of communication. There's a quiz, and then you can move on to the second video for this chapter. Now, the question is, is communication a natural ability or can you learn it? And the answer is, it is a skill that you can learn and develop. Pay attention, practice the skills you learn through this course and your abilities to communicate in any language, in any context, will improve. What is communication? It has been defined as the act of giving, receiving or exchanging information, ideas, feelings and opinions so that the message is understood by all. There are a few other definitions. It's about making sense of what we see, we hear, we touch and it's about sharing those senses with our friends, our family, etc. It's also about creating meaning understanding things that happen to us and understanding through from our point of view and others but communication is also about verbal as well as nonverbal messages now what are nonverbal messages well we don't just use words but we use symbols we use things like tone of voice can you hear my tone of voice has changed Facial expressions, uh, gestures, that word in English means movement of the hands. Uh, when you score a goal, you put your hands in the air and your face shows delight. And then, of course, clothing and jewelry is another way, particularly women, communicate very effectively to stay, show style and grace. Now, if communication is about sharing information ideas, feelings, and opinions, what percentage is each of those? In other words, body language, there you go. Tone of voice is what? Guess? And there you go. So we've got 93% of communication is how you say it and the way your body shows it, and only 7% the actual words you use. This is international research. You might want to disagree with this, but it's worth looking at and thinking about. Now, there are three communication models. I've highlighted the key words so that we can differentiate three. So it's a message creation, message, message exchange, and message transfer. So we'll start with model one. Communication as a message transfer. And that's simply saying, did you get my message? And that is the person who puts the message into a format or a channel, whether it's an email, a text, or face-to-face, -face, and the person who receives it. So there's a source, the person who sends the message. There's an English word there underlined, the originator. That is where the message started. So the originator is the person who sends the message. They put it into a form of code. That could be words, could be written, could be text. It could be, in this case, a video. And then you have a receiver. And that is the person who decodes when, or tries to understand the message. So in other words, you are the students. You're listening to this lecture. You are decoding what the teacher has explained. So there you can see it below in a diagram form. So the receiver also has what we call a filter. Now filters are very important, particularly in psychology we look at this. But filter is what can get in the way of you hearing a message, past experiences. So you may have had a really good teacher and you enjoy listening to an explanation. Maybe not. Now your attitude, 
maybe you woke up tired this morning and you're not really paying attention. So adjust your attitude because it affects how you listen to a message. And then your beliefs. You may not agree with one of these three models. In fact, the third model doesn't agree with the first two. And then, of course, the most important one is age and gender. In other words, the male interprets messages through the male brain and the female through her female brain. We interpret messages differently. And that's what we call a filter. You need to be aware of it when you're communicating with others. What are their filters? Still with model number one, there's a message. And as we said, there's various ways to put the message. And then we have a channel. Now that's an exam question, students, just hint, hint. So you could use a telephone, you could use an email, uh, a text message, or face-to-face -face message, or in this case, a video. And then you get noise. Now, noise is what keeps the message from being understood. You're watching the video and someone is calling you. You're watching the video and there's a distraction. Or you're feeling hungry and you're thinking about doing something else. So you're not listening. That's noise. And there is a diagrammatic representation of model one. Now, model number two is exactly the same as model one. All the same points, except they add these two elements, feedback. So we said there's a receiver in Model 1, but Model 2 develops that and says the listener responds to the message. They ask a question, take a note, listen to what's said, as well as context. Now, context, students, means what's around you, what's around the word in English, or what's around the message in communication. So the physical context. Maybe it's hot and you're uncomfortable, you're not listening carefully. And then you get the psychological context. It is the frame of mind you are in. Okay, so model number three actually is the most realistic model according to most scholars, where they look at the communicator, they look at social context, physical and psychological context, as well as cultural context, who you are, and then relational context. In other words, how you relate to the person sending the message. You like the teacher or the person sharing, you will listen more openly and attentively. It's a good model. Right, that's the end of part one. There are six review questions. Here's a quiz. So you can go back and look at the slides we've emailed you. Or go back and rewind the video and bring your answers to these six questions. This is your entry to the worksheet. So you do the quiz, uh, video number two, do that quiz, and then in the in the classroom we will do the worksheet and the activity. Thanks very much, students. That's the end of part one. Complete the quiz and bring your answers to class.